been presenting OpenStack for computational workloads. I'm Jon Thor Christensen. I've been uh, building basic clouds focused on uh, high performance computing for the last decade or so. I uh, started using CloudStack and then moved on to OpenStack. So I'm going to highlight a few applicable use cases of where this kind of computational workload might exist. One is the automotive and aerospace sector, where HPC is used for simulation of workloads. There's such computer, computational fluid dynamics to simulate how vehicle might perform on, or be affected by the real world. Automotive has also been an adopter of AI ML for autonomous driving and various other workloads. The energy sector optimizes the placement or operation of wind turbines or solar panels and optimizes the delivery of electricity through its network of power lines. Exploration and production workloads are used for discovery and recovery of natural resources. In the healthcare sector, HPC and AIML is used for anything from detection of cancers, cancer cells to the simulation of blood flow through vital organs. It's used to understand our major organs in pharmaceutical and genomics, the use of HPC is used to discover the function of genes and to understand complex biological processes, such as protein folding. Research and universities are using HPT to, to reach new discoveries to better understand or improve the world we live in today. And the media and entertainment industry uses large rendering clusters for video, video rendering and generating visual effects. And the financial sector uses HPC for risk and anomaly detection, high frequency trading, and portfolio management. To better support these workloads, I will provide some configuration suggestions that could be applicable with the idea of routine reducing latency and overhead via direct I.O. and direct usage of CPU futures leading to improved performance. First, I will start by highlighting some hypervisor configurations that might be of use. Consider EPA features, avoid emulation and interaction can significantly improve performance. Many features available that can improve per performance in a variety of ways. For example, huge pages allow for the usage of memory pages larger than the standard size, meaning fewer memory transitions require fewer cycles. This improves overall memory access speeds. Do consider NUMA awareness. Ensure CPU execution processes and the memory used by these processes are on the same NUMA node. Ensuring local memory access and avoiding the usage of limited node, cross-node memory bandwidth. Avoid unnecessary latency to memory access. Do consider CPU pinning. Avoid rescheduling or the moving of guest virtual CPUs to other host physical CPU cores. Improves the overall performance and makes CPU scheduling deterministic, which is critical for the scheduling of computational workloads, such as those in HPC. Do consider host CPU feature requests for workloads that can take direct advantage of CPU instruction sets, such as advanced vector extensions or crypto offloading, or any other uh, CPU features that might be applicable to your workload. The host pass-through gives the best performance but can limit line migration options in mixed CPU environments. It's not advisable to run workloads across mixed CPU environments, and that should not generally be a concern. Do consider PCI pass-through for direct access of computational PCI devices, such as GPUs and FPGAs. And dev and vGPU features can also be used to take advantage of some of the PCI devices, often giving access to more possibilities in terms of device segmentation. An instance type for HPC could effectively consume 
the entire hyperosis. If the workload can take advantage of all available resources, a compute flavor for HPC instances could expose less than the total available CPU cores to, pro to provide a cost-efficient offering for users of commercial HPC workloads that are memory bandwidth, bandwidth limited to a greater scale than they are limited by availability of CPU cores. Consider not overcommitting on memory and CPU cores for compute-focused flavor under these circumstances. Consider dynamic frequency scaling. Some workloads can make greater use of dynamic frequency scaling, such as uh, if not all cores are in use. For example, when memory bandwidth is limited, Do consider hypervisor tuning. Reference configurations exist from all major CPU manufacturers. Give them a try and validate. They often provide guidance on BIOS settings and other settings to maximize performance of underlying hardware. Now I'll highlight some of the options available for networking. Do consider SROIV uh, for networking if workload is sensitive to latency and bandwidth. Most computational workloads that scale and communicate across a cluster of nodes are, or possibly consider hardware of load using oven and DPUs. Do consider DPDK for routing, if, for example, computational storage or project storage traffic goes across a router. Overall, best to avoid routing for computational traffic if possible. The scratch should preferably be designed in such a way that computational storage should not be accessed across networks. Next, I'll go some storage considerations. Uh, do consider direct and local I.O. for computational storage. The further the workload has to go to access its storage, the more latency is added, increasing overall computational time. Do consider workload requirements for computational storage. HPC workloads and machine learning have different I.O. patterns. HPC workloads generally have higher write than reads, and machine learning often the opposite. But there are cases when it can also be mixed. Performance considerations also differ, with HPC often needing high bandwidth for larger I.O.s and machine learning the smaller IOS. HPC workloads use IOPS for metadata, while machine learning use IOPS for both data and metadata. But overall, it's always uh, about observing, measuring, and monitoring. Consider using a comprehensive shooter monitoring tool to observe, measure, and validate any assumptions made on performance and limitations. It helps with identifying any bottlenecks, such as CPU, memory bandwidth, and I.O. limitations. Observe, measure, and test assumptions. Plenty of tools available, make incremental changes, and test to validate. Known tools are, for example, uh, high performance link pack, it's useful for kind of figuring out both CPU and networking limitations. Uh, for memory bandwidth, uh, Stream Triad is a popular tool, storage, FIO, and network, there are various uh, MPI tests and, of course, IPERB. 
lastly, I will highlight the uh, use case. We we have a reference configuration available here where you can uh, which you can scan with a QR code. Uh, this uh, case is called Thermosquid. It's a uh, it's a local cloud provider in Tasmania. Uh, they are basically offering uh, AI ML and HPC uh, with their uh, computational focused clusters uh, in data centers uh, with uh, extremely low uh, PoE. Feel free to take a look at the uh, this reference case. Um, Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask uh, them now or find us at uh, booth B11 uh, to have a discussion. Okay, thank you.